Hello everyone, apologies for the late start. Uh, I'm aware that a lot of you have had problems getting here and a very, very big thank you for still battling on and coming. Uh, I know this is going to be worth waiting for, so uh, very warm welcome to Simon. Uh, I couldn't believe it when he said that you'd be able to actually come in November. I was expecting to have to wait some time at the end of next year. So I feel very, very thrilled about it and thrilled about all the people who have turned out today. I don't think Simon needs much introduction. I don't know what he's going to talk about, but whatever it is, it'll be amazing. So I'm going to waste no more time and pass you over to Simon. Thank you very much. Um, yes, I'm aware a number of us have had some real difficulties getting here today. Um, the one-way system, the Christmas shoppers, diversion routes, no parking. Um, I think if you live here, you know where to park. And if you're like me and you just come here to do the shopping from time to time, it is quite difficult. Although it is a, a lovely place. All right, so first of all, thank you, the organisers, for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you to everybody who's made that sterling effort to get here. Um, I would always do a talk if the audience uh, are the uh, awake sort of people that we need. Um, and I don't really turn down talks unless there's something that's uh, not right about it. Um, all right, so uh, before I start, I just want to say that I've been um, in the public eye for a number of years, and you can't really do what I do without taking some form of damage, some form of hurt. So I'm going to be taking probably three months off away from the public eye to uh, just see how I am and uh, get ready for the next big battle. And I think uh, a couple of thanks are probably um, around. Thanks to everyone at uh, Connecting Consciousness who are, are working so hard, all the organisers um, and all the ordinary members. It's really important that we keep that going. And uh, a big thank you to Rebecca. Rebecca, who has uh, been so supportive and helpful over the last few years. A uh, very big thank you to her. Right, now, as it's nearly Christmas, uh, I thought that what we would do we would have a talk that looks to the future, what the positive points will be and some of the more challenging points. But I thought we'd also have a look at why we got to this point. Um, a number of speakers talk about some very interesting subjects which maybe happened 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. And in its own place, that's very important. But what we all need is up-to-date information, information that's occurring while we're speaking, while we're thinking what's going to be happening now, next week, next month, etc. But that's not to say that we can't learn from the past. And in order to understand what's happened and what is unfolding, we need to get a grasp on what's brought us to this point. Because even researchers in the ufology or the uh, industry fail to grasp some of the most important links that have brought us to this point and you can learn the future from the past right um i'm not on wi-fi today i'm all wired up it is digital but it's cabling so i've got to be careful and trip over and um, we've got someone to press the button for me because we're not on remote not yet <laughs> but what's good about that is I've got a couple of slides and we're going to talk about Wi-Fi and the danger of Wi-Fi. Not Wi-Fi itself, but what can be tagged along to Wi-Fi. So that's quite helpful. All right, could we start that? Thank you. So the first point I put up was the greatest dangers to humanity. And I'm asking the question of you, what are they? So can you just... Put your hands up and tell me what you believe the greatest dangers facing humanity are. Just humanity itself, okay? Chips, Chips. Chips. right? Good one. <clears throat> Just your own ignorance is killing you. Okay, so that's great. Humanity, yeah. Vaccines. 
Accent, good. Fair, good. Yes, good. <laughs> yeah, good. Another one, go on. Okay, they're both good. Gentle back. Yes, very good. That. Okay, thank you. Oh, I'll take the one more. Go on. Ignorance. Ignorance. It's, it's very telling when I address a group of awake and spiritual people, as you all are, that you are able to say that humanity has a number of traits which either can be used against itself or just naturally do that. Um, the elements that others have raised are only possible or could only become possible if humanity allows that. So I must bear that in mind. So thank you for identifying um, some of the key points. Please, next one. We all know what the New World Order is, but we don't always know what the agenda is. Um, when we go on the websites, we see lots and lots of articles about New World Order and the same things being rehashed. There are some very well written items, but generally speaking, they are either disinformation or they're inaccurate. Remember that the New World Order is not our order. It's not what we want. It's what a group of idealistic people, in their own way, what they believe is the right way forward. And ever since 1776, it's been publicly put forward. Prior to that, it was very covert. So we're looking at an agenda. Who can tell me some of the agenda items for this um, Kabbalistic group? Okay. Uh, depopulation. Depopulation, really good. Agenda 21 linking as well. Very good indeed. So we've got depopulation and Agenda 21. Some two good points. What else might the New World Order want from us? One World Government. Y yes. Um, and who would be head of that One World Government? Anybody know? Yeah? I'd say the Queen or the Right. Um, they would want a figurehead. Who might be the figurehead for the New World Order? Fantastic. I haven't got any presents today. Those of you who've seen me know I generally give them out, but had I have a present, you would have got one. Um, the problem that we have is that uh, religion is deeply rooted, and religion in itself is not wrong. It is the way it's controlled and organized by men. Yes, <laughs> men. And that means they needed a figurehead. And you know, of course, that the Pope has recently been to America, been to what they call the Lawmakers Building, and given a speech. And we should all ask, why would the Pope, who doesn't speak for the Muslims, or the Jews, or the Hindus, and only speaks for one part of the Christian faith, why would he be going, not to the United Nations, but to the government center for America and making a world speech? So we need to understand that, that the Pope is designed to play a very important part in the New World Order. But that isn't the subject that perhaps would really interest us at the moment. Can we have the next one, please? Right, we talked about that, brought the good point up on the first table. Uh, ever since the 1950s, there have been rumors that the, um, the satanic uh, elite wish to kill off anything from 50% to 75% of the population. Now, why is that? Well, one of the points here is that they love the planet. Don't get this wrong. These people love a, a rainbow. They love the forest, just as you do. They love to see the animals uh, running, running free. What they don't like is to see anybody else enjoying it. So they want the planet for themselves without having to bother about anybody else. Just their friends. And until technology really moved on the last eight, nine years, the only way that these people saw a future would be to remove the majority of the population. Now with the increase in technology, I have to tell you that that's no longer the immediate uh, agenda item. Let's go back a little bit. 
As this talk develops, you're going to understand what the greatest threat facing me, you, and every other living creature on this planet who is not part of this uh, psychopathic group. And we talk about artificial intelligence. The, the, the main thing that people hook on is reptilians. If you talk about reptilians, you get reams and reams and reams of uh, text on the subject. When you talk about AI, then people begin to look around and get confused. Let's go right back to the days of the Industrial Revolution. Let us imagine an incarnate force. So this is a force that is an intellect and cannot take shape. But its role or its wish is to dominate every living creature on the planet. But it can't manifest itself physically. The only way it can is to be drawn into the human bodies if the human bodies want that to happen. So what you have to do is you have to artificially speed up the technology on the planet. So with the Industrial Revolution, which was not a normal um, process, what the Western world developed was the hardware smelting processes, the ability to produce power from wind or from water, the forgings of metal, the rise of the corporations through the very rich and wealthy individuals who could then bring groups of people together, <clears throat> not quite as slaves, but in a way that they were tied to that factory or tied to that work. And all over the Western world, these people were working, producing some advanced technology for the time. So from about the 1700s onwards, we saw some very big advances. Come 1947, those advances had really gone as far as they could. The hardware was actually present, but what was not present was any of the software or the ability to take it to the next stage. Now, there's many people who talk about Roswell and many people who have their own views on it. And remember, it's just my view. You know, I'm not here to argue with other people's views. I just put my view across. And I do believe that the 1947 crash was two uh, vehicles and they were deliberately crashed. Yes, they, they were hit by some form of energy, but they were designed to crash. Because what happened was an advanced technology that we should never have had at that point passed into the hands of the Americans. And you know from your own research that this is where fiber optic cables have come from, where the microchips have come from, where the night vision equipment has come from, where the lasers have come from. And if we're in any doubt about that, you only have to look at um, uh, a guy called Shockley, who was officially uh, credited with inventing the transistor. And if you know your history, uh, Roswell was uh, in the summer of 47, some six months later, oh, we've invented the transistor, the Bell Labs. So we look for the uh, invention of the laser beam, same, same link there. The only thing that the Americans realized was that they couldn't make an obvious paper trail. They learned the lesson because if you look at Bell Labs and you try to look at their, um, their past history in developing it, it's very poor. So what they, they do now is they ensure that their multinational has a track record in a particular subject before they'll give it that technology. So we've got very advanced chips, the software to run them, and the ability to smelt and make rare metals. So we've achieved everything that this artificial intelligence wanted us to achieve, hence the term useless eaters. In other words, you've made the machinery we want, we have the devices we want, we don't need you anymore. So until the last seven, eight, nine years, that was the, the policy. Well, now it's possible to control everyone on the planet through chipping. Okay, one of the issues that nobody brought up, because we don't necessarily see it as part of this agenda, and that's fracking. I know that in its own right, we know that fracking is bad, but we don't link it to the agenda of the New World Order. I can absolutely assure you that fracking is a key agenda of the New World Order. We are all mammals. We have a blood supply in our body. 
This earth has its own supply of underground streams of water. And it's through the underground streams of water that coded information is carried. Yes, I know there are ley lines, and that's a different sort of energy. But there are underground streams in every landmass where the planet communicates with itself through these streams. Now, these nasty, evil, elite people know this. And the whole purpose of fracking is to pour millions of gallons of poison, toxic waste into that water supply to disrupt the planet's communication. Because if they can disrupt the planet's communication, then they can disrupt the connection between humanity and the planet. Um, what's not possibly understood, is there is a covenant that exists between the planet and us. And thank goodness the planet hasn't forgotten that many, 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 many years ago, the human races across the land masses actually honoured the planet. So people were far more spiritual with, with the, the running water, with the, with the valleys, the stone rocks, and were not about to harm the planet. So that hasn't been forgotten. And it's really important that we maintain that connection. So please understand that fracking, yes, as a secondary byproduct, will produce um, gas. And I'm sure that one of the main points about running down power stations in this country was deliberately to force this argument that we need fracking. This year, we will be between 2.5 and 3% short of the power we need at winter. So literally, if we get a bad winter, which is predicted because it's El Nino year, we are 3% below the necessary net. And next year, it'd be 5% and the year after 7%. Because what the government's done is it's closed power stations and made no provision. And then the argument will be, well, that's why we need fracking. So this is all part of their plan. So please remember that fracking is not just um, an outrage, it's actually an outrage against humanity. This is, a, this is not a trick photography. This is an ordinary tap in an American household, and that's the water supply. And because of the methane gas used in fracking, it actually permeated the water supply. And here you can actually set light to your drinking water. So when people tell you that fracking is OK, except when the well is a little bit dodgy, that's not true. And I'm sure that the people who lived in that particular town obviously just drank bottled water for the rest of their lives. So it's methane gas is used along with a, a bit of oil. Uh, not supposed to, but they do, and a whole range of um, chemicals. About two years ago, I was asked how the best way to combat fracking with the public, how to try to get the public on side. And I actually said, look, if it's the middle class people, you just got to say the house prices will be halved, because that's what people seem to be bothered about. And it's true that if you live near a fracking well and you own your own property, the price will drop. But of course, what we've seen is the government produce legislation that allows an oil company to drill under your house without your permission. Next one, please. Right, AI, artificial intelligence. Um, it's like a big game of chess, but like any computer, AI has one failing, which is it can't anticipate humans' change. For instance, on Monday morning, you may say, well, I think I'm going to go to the shops then Monday afternoon, no, I don't think I will. Then Monday evening, oh, I think I will. It's very hard for AI to predict that. So what their elite have been doing is trying to build computers that can learn from our decisions. In other words, a predictive computer. That's what we're going to be talking about a little bit. Okay. Who mentioned chemtrails? Thank you. I, I know many, many of us know about chemtrails. Um, they have reduced. There's probably a 50% reduction across the country at the moment. Um, an elite group, it's always 12, isn't it? But an elite group of half human and half something else um, who control the black budgets from the Western world, each of these individuals 
We have different names like guardians or parents or grandparents. They actually authorise and sign off each year or each six months, the coming period. And the particular individual who was in charge of the chemtrailing um, is no longer in that position. About six weeks before this person left, if you were really uh, observant, you would have noticed that chemtrailing was being crisscrossed. So not just the normal lines in the sky, but like a lattice. Um, and, you know, we have got a really, really useful photograph of a, an alien spacecraft actually appearing into the lattice to actually try and deactivate some of it. So chemtrailing will be reduced, but not stopped. So let's talk about chemtrailing. You need to understand that, that many of the pilots in these commercial airliners have no idea. Okay, some of them do, but you know, they have a really good job and they want a pension, so they're not going to say anything because they don't fully understand what's going on. But the vast majority don't. So what's being sprayed? Well, they've sprayed bacteria and viruses. Um, they've tried different sorts of gel to keep those creatures alive. Uh, they've actually sprayed tiny, tiny, tiny particles, not quite nano, but really tiny particles of, of aluminum or aluminium to uh, stay in the Earth's atmosphere so that whenever a non-reptilian uh, spacecraft appears, it sets out a resonance frequency which a radar will detect. If you have a spacecraft coming from another dimension, when it pops into our reality, it creates a disturbance. And just as in 1944, the Americans and the British used Operation Window when they dropped uh, reels of tin foil out of a Lancaster bomber to confuse German radar. This is exactly the same principle, but, but far more advanced. So that was one part of it. And then a few years ago, they realized that they had the ability to put nano robots, tiny, tiny little robots out, which we would all inhale, but it wouldn't kill us unless activated. So let's have the next one. And again. Right. Nanorobots are small uh, devices that can use uh, either an internal power cell or they can actually use the natural electric in your body, the static or whatever, the, the electric current we have, to keep themselves powered up for a period of time. Um, and these particular ones here do jobs. They look pretty, oh god, I mustn't turn around. They look pretty fearsome with arms and legs. But that's one aspect. These things either build or um, can make you quite ill. The other aspect are those that will join together to form something like a supercomputer. So when we've been breathing in these particles, we have been breathing in things like this. Now, on their own, they're not going to do anything because they've not been activated. Next one, please. And again, thanks. This one shows how it connects to a cell and has a little cable coming from it. These are all absolutely microscopic. They are programmed so that when you breathe them in, they will go to a particular organ or they'll travel around your bloodstream and when they'll find uh, Fred, then they'll connect with Fred, and they'll know Fred from George, and they'll build up over a period of time devices. This is really important because it, it demonstrates how a circuit board in a nano can be built. Each group... Each group is separate, meets its friend, and connects. And this is how you can just go on building and building and building. Now they've done this and they, they have done this on, on wide scale. The supercomputers that the Americans have are small portable computers all linked together. Uh, sometimes when George Will Bank in Britain was doing some projects, they asked you not to switch your computer off at night and they would access it. And lots of well-meaning people said, oh yeah, we'll, we'll will do that because they said, oh, the processing power of all these PCs all over the country will allow us to have all this extra computing power. And people unwittingly did that. And of course, they, they produced a supercomputer. But here we're talking about 
on a wide scale, very large built devices capable of predictive thinking. And on this is the nano side. Because it's no good you being uh, filled full of these small little robots or chips unless there's something to control it. And the chips that you're used to are RFID chips. Those are not what we're talking about. An RFID chip is a chip that identifies you to a computer. The chips we're talking about here are chips designed to take over your mind, take over your body. That's where they've gone in the last six, seven years. Chipping. So we know the RFID chips. These are the uh, chips that were used, believe it or not, by the Spitfire pilots in the Second World War. We call them today transponders in an aeroplane. So it sends out, this is who I am, and in your friend or foe. The process that they were thinking of 10, 15, 20 years ago um, was literally to have readers on the street or in a shop, and as you walked past, it would scan you and say, that's number 52,628,000, Fred. So that's one way of doing it. The other way is to say, OK, well, mm, you don't need a bank card anymore. So we're going to put the chip in your hand, and you can have all your bank account details on your hand. And through that, they would then control your money supply. So if you went and went on a demonstration, and a, friend, a member of my family recently went on a demonstration and lost her job because uh, she was targeted, and without the chip, they just did that with cameras. But the chipping allows them to control everybody like that. Right, press it again for me. That give you an idea of the size required. So we're looking at about an inch. This is the sort of chip that you would have to have as it stands to control everything else that you might have in your body. Now how on earth would you have that? Why would you have that? So this is not what we're thinking. When we're thinking chips, we're thinking the traditional grain of rice. But this is the, the controlling chip. OK, next one, please. Thankfully, some people are aware, uh, although it's very muted, because uh, two to three, four, five years ago, the Americans ran a very expensive advertising campaign on cable television where actors were um, telling the public just how good it was to be chipped. And the usual point was, well, I can open the garage doors without leaving my house. I can turn the heating off when I'm at work. I can do this, that, and the other. But we've seen some very nasty, nasty actions since the Pope made the New World Order speech last month in America. Uh, you'll know, I'm sure, that in Australia, from January of next year, uh, if you wish to claim unemployment benefit, you will have to be vaccinated. If you wish to claim old age pension, you will have to be vaccinated. And all children, all babies are to be vaccinated from January of next year. Now this appears on a document at the very highest level in America and yet, as always, they let the Australians trial it first. Interestingly, in Norway, uh, in the main city of Oslo, uh, they are bringing out a, a forced policy of inoculating all children. And so a number of parents are literally moving out of that city. So it's being trialled. And once they see how it works there, then they're going to try and push it into America and Britain. And, you know, parents don't want their children chipped. I have no problem with a cat or a dog being chipped. But, you know, that plays a role if that animal is lost and recovered. The chipping in you is not designed for that. And one of the uh, adverts that I had this privilege of watching was uh, an actor saying, well, if a terrorist attacks the school and my children get lost, then the police can scan all the children they find and I can have my child returned to me. You'd have to be an actor to say that, wouldn't you? Okay, 
next one. Right. You press the button again, please. That is the cutting edge chip. You know the one that we saw where we're being flexible with? They can't go ahead and put that in you. They can put that in you. So that is a real photograph, it's not a trick. That is the controlling chip. Because the uh, nano chips that are pushed out in chemtrails are far smaller than that. That is your controlling chip. Thank you. One more. The other possibility was on a skin graft, where it was actually flexible like that. Um, that's one of the reasons that tattoos over the last five to seven years have been pushed and why they have such demonic shapes. Um, some of the styles which we see on a lot of the science fiction television programs are being copied through into tattoo marks and people don't realise it, they just think they look really exciting and really good. The whole object is another arm to see whether uh, we can go down this road, as they would say, and put these, these chips on. But these can be removed, that's the point. If you suddenly realise what's going on, then you could actually get rid of that. Next one. Does anybody know what transhumanisation is? One of the uh, Black Noirs of Ray Kurzweil is basically heading towards a singularity, so basically wiring everybody up so that you are a controlled unit within a supercomputer, and therefore are ultimately controlled by that. Thank you. That was really good. I'm just going to sort of paraphrase that a little bit. Transhumanism is an agenda from the same crazy people that we've been talking about who are following orders from their uh, disincarnate master to control people. And the best way to control people isn't to point a gun at them, it isn't to pass a law for parliament, it's actually to start to change you so that you lose your humanity. That's the whole point about this, because this artificial intelligence isn't flesh and blood. It's not organic, it doesn't understand us. But it does understand that it can sell an idea which appears to be benevolent. And that once we become part machine and part human, then we will make a choice as to whether we wish to remain human or become fully machine. And through many science fiction films and through many um, very um, far-seeing writers, this topic has come up. So we're going to talk about transhumanism because it's a term you are going to meet very much in the next coming 12 months. Next one. Do you know what that sign is? There was an um, article in my local paper where the uh, police and crime commissioner was saying that she was very distressed that half of the population of the town I live in uh, didn't know what the non-emergency number for the police was. And in the same way, most people haven't a clue what this is. It's about being hidden in plain sight and then going live with it. This is the symbol that you will see. If they get their way, this is the symbol for transhumanism. Okay, so this is a sign that we'll start seeing going up in hospitals and private places. Right, and this is very interesting because there are a number of projects about to try to move us from this biological body, which I think is a divine body, but clearly isn't the sort of body that this artificial intelligence wants, wants it across, turn around without setting off this speaker. I know the screen's small, so I'll quickly just read it out. Uh, Avatar A, and don't be mistaken with the word avatar because someone was trying to tell you something with the film. So between 2015 and 2020, there's a robotic copy of a human body remotely controlled. So in other words, um, they're going to try to create the perfect physical body but made out of non-organic material. That's the easy part. These are their plans, remember. So between 2020 and 25, they want an avatar with a human brain transplanted at the end of one's life. So in other words, the rich person's dream 
and want to live forever, so they actually donate their brain and that brain to see if it will work inside a non-organic body. Between 2030 and 2035, replace that human brain with an artificial brain in which a human personality is transferred at the end of one's life. So you now have the hope of your personality um, living forever in a non-organic way. And then finally, the 2040 to 2045, a hologram-like avatar. In other words, there's nothing physical. So do you see? It's exactly what the AI is. It's not physical, and it wants to take us from a physical blood and bone and sinew position to something that's holographic, just like it. And this is the way it wants to do it. It wants to do it by tricking people and saying to them, oh dear, you lost your arm in an accident. We can give you a bionic arm. Remember the bionic man, those of you who remember the 70s? On that side, it looks brilliant. But we're not looking at a standalone piece of technology. We're looking at a very, very invasive plan to try to sell an idea, which is the devil, frankly. Okay, next one, then we might have that break in a minute. What film is that from? Metropolis. A uh, very early film, um, before 1933, it's a silent film, and that's exactly what you're looking at. You're looking at transhumanism. And I didn't show this picture, um, I showed this picture, not the next one, I didn't use that, but it actually shows a magical uh, pentagon pentagram behind the robot. So those who are in the Illuminati and those who um, are in the Cabal are very clear that they want to see this progress. But when the technology wasn't there, then it just seemed a dream. A dream they'd been promised. There was a promise and they didn't have the technology. No Roswell at that point. Um, my own mother, this is one of her favorite films actually. Right, now, because I started late, how do you want to work the, the, the break times? Um, what is it? Have you got another hour? Six yes. Would it be all right with the 10 minute break rather than half an hour? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Would, that, would that be okay? Uh, yeah.